uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, let me uh, welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, welcome to the second webinar in the Creative Stage Lighting Educational Series. Uh, before we begin, uh, just let me touch base on a couple of housekeeping issues. Uh, you do have the capability during the course of this webinar to submit questions uh, about the presentation in the, uh, the chat box. Um, what we'll try to do in the interest of time will be to hold most of the questions until the end of the session and then try to answer them at that point. Uh, if we aren't able to get to all your questions during the live event, we will respond to you via email after the session concludes. OK, um, on to the webinar. Today's event will take a look at the converging technologies of the entertainment lighting market. Uh, the rapidly changing lighting world brings us a wide variety of lighting and effect options that can be blended together uh, to create a vision, uh, either by the pr production designer or the lighting designer, uh, anyone involved in um, any kind of live event marketing. Uh, all of us saw what can be achieved through the blending of diverse technologies to create the ultimate show while viewing the recent Olympics in Beijing. Uh, the opening ceremonies gave the world a hint of what is possible when art and technology come together. Uh, the intent of today's session is to provide the lighting professional with information regarding the tools available to achieve that kind of vision, some of the ways to apply those tools, and examples of some of the application possibilities. Uh, this webinar will give us a perspective on the technologies that are driving our industry today, as well as an overview of where it will be going in the future. Uh, during today's webinar, we'll be looking to get feedback from you by asking you some polling questions. Uh, to show you what I mean by this, and to get a brighter idea of the makeup of the audience, I have a couple of quick questions for you right now. If you are a, a lighting reseller or um, professional, uh, what markets are you focused on? Uh, so if you could take a look at the poll, uh, cast your vote, and uh, that will give us a better idea of uh, who we're, who we're going to be, be speaking to. get about 90% of the votes in. If anybody else has a desire to cast their vote, uh, please do so. And then we'll close the poll and give you our results. OK, so based on, um, on that information, 68% uh, of you are focused on live events and, and touring events, 57% uh, on the corporate event market, 64% on permanent installations, and 18% in the other category. OK. So what I'd like to do at this point is uh, introduce our presenters, uh, give you a little bit of background, and then, uh, then turn it over. Uh, today's presenters are both industry veterans with an extensive knowledge in the area of converged technologies. Uh, they've both been intimately involved in the development and introduction of advanced technologies that are helping to, uh, to drive the converged marketplace and provide lighting professionals with the tools to achieve truly outstanding results. Craig Burroughs has been the Northeast Regional Manager for High-End Systems since 1991. He's worked extensively as a key consulting contact with NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox Networks, as well as many Broadway productions. He's been at the forefront of introducing new high-end products for the past 17 years. John Calcagno has been with Barco since 1990, beginning as a customer service engineer, and moving on to head up Barco's customer service and quality control departments. In 2000, John joined the newly formed rental and staging division, where he works with touring groups and corporate staging events. John's primary focus is in the area of um, LED projection and switching needs. Um, I'm Kevin Loretto. I'm the director of dealer sales for Creative Space Lighting, and I'll be your moderator during today's session. And what I'd like to do at this point is uh, turn over the controls uh, to Craig and let him drive the rest of this presentation. And as I said, please feel free to, uh, to sh ask any questions as we're going along. OK? Go ahead, Craig. I think you've got control now, so take it away. Let me see if I do have control. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for participating in this uh, Creative Stage Lighting webinar. Um, we believe that it's a bidirectional um, productive event and not only for our company to convey our message to you and 
get you involved in what we're trying to do and accomplish here, but also uh, get feedback from you that's very useful for us uh, moving forward uh, to help us determine uh, training seminars, uh, product development, uh, things of this nature. So thank you all for participating. Uh, for the sake of this presentation, we will be showing uh, Barco-related product, both for the Barco Lighting Systems product uh, and also for the Barco and Media, Media and Entertainment uh, division. So, uh, of course, any other product could be used in these applications. Uh, we just wanted to use our product because uh, we're involved. And, and you will not see them, but we'll be displaying subliminal messages with product spec sheets, pricing specials, and stuff. So hopefully we'll hear back from you. <laughs> John, you want to say hi to him? Hey, everybody. Just uh, appreciate you guys uh, logging on. And uh, I'm just sitting here in my Halloween costume right now, uh, listening to Craig uh, give his presentation. So, uh, <laughs> Thanks, John. I'll jump in in a bit. Thank you very much. Let's see if I have a control of the system here. All right. Kevin, I actually do not have control. Okay. So feel Try free to keep it. Okay, I'll keep it. You just tell me when to uh, when yep. to switch. Slide, please. Yep. So this is a good example of a uh, converged event. We have uh, screen LED screen panels, front surface panels. Uh, we have projection systems involved. We have Mitrix creative LED products involved, image control and processing involved, uh, digital lighting involved, uh, as well as uh, conventional analog lighting involved. Slide, please. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, just to talk about the convergence and the recent acquisition of high-end systems by Barco, uh, Barco traditionally was a video, uh, video manufacturing company, video products, projection products. They got into creative LED several years ago. High-end was a traditional automated lighting product manufacturer. Uh, we did as well produce and manufacture uh, special effect equipment at one point in time. But uh, a few years ago, we decided to focus our resources on developing digital lighting and the tools to um, provide that experience to the end user. So uh, we have about 37 or 38 uh, existing digital lighting patents, which was very uh, interesting for Barco. Uh, they started looking at us uh, a couple of years ago and recently acquired us. And the reason is because the digital can canvas, uh, which is represented here in this slide, is a good place for growth for both companies, us being there and one uh, a little bit ahead of Barco. They acquired us, so we feel like that's a really good, a good fit for both companies. Yes. So the convergence of video and lighting markets, it is the convergence of product level and also the convergence on the customer level. Uh, that's you, that's the end user as well, people that are becoming more familiar uh, with the tools involved, uh, seeing them at trade shows, getting some hands-on training, uh, and as well analog and digital lighting transition within lighting is the digital lights, the media servers, the LED, the tools themselves. And the part I love about this is that whole digital canvas, you know, the merging of that to create that, that effect that the... Uh, the the person with the vision is actually looking for. Exactly. Slide, please. Yep. There we go. Great. So um, we'll talk about the Barco Media and Entertainment Division, uh, which John and I both fall within. Uh, this particular division of the company focuses on advertising and branding. Uh, the tools to do that, the tools to convey uh, sports advertising, scoreboards, large video displays, uh, also events division and the digital cinema division. Slide. Yeah. Um, obviously, the exterior LED uh, display uh, market is huge and growing every day. Uh, of course, if anyone's traveled to any of the major cities, they see a lot of the signage out this, at this point in time. A lot of media, a lot of advertising. It's just so easy to upload custom content and for the owner of the sign uh, location. Uh, to see huge revenue returns. So full color LED display systems and peripheral equipment uh, are something that Barco focuses on uh, for all of those uh, particular uh, segments in that market. Yeah, I think we saw a lot of that when we were all, and any of you that were out at LDI saw a tremendous amount of this being uh, displayed around the, around the hall and, and also back in June at Infocom, uh, just a huge amount of, of digital signage pretty much every place we went. Exactly. So um, 
this is an example of an installation where uh, external signs can be used for not only uh, the, the message, the marketing delivery, but also uh, you know, a, a creative aspect in terms of uh, scenic design. Of course, you've got the sports applications with color LED display systems and peripheral equipment uh, for indoor and outdoor sports arenas, including the indoor LED displays, outdoor LED displays, uh, fascia boards, and scoreboards, of course, which everyone is seeing now with professional arenas. Um, and that happened relatively quick. Um, those started popping up, obviously, uh, on top of the scoreboard several years ago. But in terms of wrapping the arenas, the interior of the arenas, now we're seeing those in all these professional arenas. And that's happened within the last, the last three years. OK, of course, we all deal with events, or many of us do. Uh, we're talking about auto shows where the background uh, presentations are accomplished with uh, uh, surface-mounted LED panels, uh, temporary LED displays. Uh, now they begin to start to take shape and form, not just flat panels any longer. So LED protection and control equipment for rental and staging industries. Uh, of course, we're used to concerts. We'll see some very good shots of some of the shows that we've done. And, uh, good representation for that, and then uh, again the car shows and such. This was uh, George Michaels. This was his most recent tour. Uh, Vince Foster was involved in it. Uh, ben Richards was the lighting designer, and you can see where the my strips were used uh, to create this nice curved uh, scenic element uh, that uh, you know you could walk around on top of, and a lot of uh, a lot of beautiful art uh, can be delivered from that. And look at the crowds that guy still draws. <laughs> Exactly. Can't go to a car show anymore without seeing a lot of LED displays, a lot of very expensive, uh, fine, fine uh, mill uh, setups uh, for high res and HD. Yeah, just real quick. Um, the products you're looking at here are the uh, is the Olight product that um, enables you to uh, to remove the modules from inside the tile, uh, giving the uh, creative group, uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, make shapes or the two-sided uh, columns or uh, you know, rows that, that you uh, saw in that last slide. Uh, Next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, then of course uh, we have the digital, digital cinema market segment. And there's a lot of growth here, a lot of home theater growth with digital cinema, um, HD displays. I'm not certain uh, if, if many of you are involved in that area at this point in time, but because we have the experience of the production background, a lot of us are being pulled into that uh, market segment surely through our understanding of the technologies, uh, the control systems, remote control systems, projection systems, LED systems, and such. Um, so uh, if you're not in it yet, you can expect to be called upon eventually. Um, to assist with that in one way or the other. And there's, a, again, a, a large growth uh, potential there okay. for, for many of us in the industry. Yeah, Craig, it might be a good time. We have another, uh, another polling question here, um, basically looking to, um, say, find out who, uh, what companies have plans to expand business into other market segments in the near future. Uh, so basically, we have uh, the, the touring market, which, uh, which many of us in the segment are into. Uh, the corporate market, TV and studio, as you were just mentioning, uh, the worship market, which is uh, a tremendous growth area, um, and, and other markets that we may not be including in this. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and cast your vote here, I'll give you a few more minutes. Uh, we've got about 50% that have included their vote at this point, uh, so go ahead and feel free. And John, there's been a request. If you can, um, when you, when you're speaking, if you can, uh, if you can speak up into the phone a little bit more. They're saying it's low on the other end. Okay. Okay. All righty. We'll just take a, another second here. Anybody who hasn't voted, please feel free to do so. We've got about 87% of the people casting votes. Okay. We'll close the poll and share the results with you. Um, basically, we've got 22% uh, that say they're focused on the touring market, 48% uh, that are in corporate and corporate events, 33% in TV and studio. So, Craig, you do have a good market segment here that's already focused there. 
Uh, Fifty-nine percent focused on the worship market, which is uh, which is not a surprise based on the growth that we're seeing in that area, uh, and forty-one percent uh, in in other markets. Okay, so thank you for your participation there, and we'll move on. Beautiful slide. Yep, we get the Canepolis in Belgium now. Probably could have timed those transitions a little quicker, couldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is an exa another example of digital cinema. Uh, you know, again, HD, uh, large format screen, LED displays, but also that could be a front surface or rear surface uh, projection as well, uh, easily. Okay. Move it into broadcast. Uh, of course, a uh, large market segment is broadcast. Uh, high profitability there. Um, large systems, very leading edge systems. You know, they've got to keep up with one another. Uh, the demand for multiple cameras, side up links and down links, such and such. Uh, the visualization, image processing, and software integration for broadcast and distribu distribution monitoring centers. Uh, again, rear projection walls, LED video backdrops. Uh, that's a big business. Okay. Got an example of uh, TVN24 in Poland. Assuming they're using a lot of uh, Barco and Honeyan products there. Exactly. You can see the panels behind her. There's also uh, LED, creative LED curving up on the top of fascia. Mm -hmm. okay. Flat panels around left and right. Uh, we see that every day. All of us, uh, you know, on CNN, the Fox, uh, a lot of that, a lot of that gear is used. Okay. Um, new category for me. Uh, I've heard architainment, but I haven't heard edutainment before. So. To tell very, a very big it. business, and it's a lot of growth here as well. And, and you know, starting about two years ago, uh, museums specifically uh, started uh, getting involved with us in a big way uh, to provide specifications for their upcoming expansion plans. Again, you know, people walk in; it's more of an interactive environment, um, but ult ultimately, it's for education purposes. Uh, it'll grab your attention. Uh, it'll keep your attention. Uh, these tools will keep. Uh, the audience's attention and at the same time deliver a, an educational uh, need. So projection solutions for museum and science, science centers, aquariums, again, a planetarium existence here. And that's I think virtual market. reality and 3D. Absolutely. I think a lot of us uh, are enamored by uh, virtual reality and um, ever so present now. Uh, we'll see a lot of growth there uh, with uh, with Disney, with Universal Studios, uh, installations uh, keep the audience coming back. Uh, it's very easily changed in terms of the content deployed, uh, which is one of the key key things behind this digital technology uh, is the ease of changing the scenic elements, the content delivery, uh, or delivered to to the participants. You've got a couple of examples here: the Shell Ace VR Center in Malaysia. Exactly. And also uh, PSA France, which I think is the you know kind of typical of what we're envisioning as far as virtual reality and the uh, the visualization type of software. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. All right. Corporate AV. Uh, yep. I know that's a major market for a lot of us. It's been business, been a big business, been around for a long time now. Uh, corporate AV. They're wanting to uh, have these you know, mega centers, mega corporate training centers for their employees, as well as their uh, as well as their resellers and uh, representatives. And so corporate AV is a huge marketplace, uh, a lot of opportunity with interactive uh, media, multiple remote control stations, uh, drop-down screens, large HD displays, LED front panel, uh, and rear projection and front projection surfaces uh, going on now with these, uh, with these types of installations. Uh, a lot of it is DMX controlled. Lighting is, uh, is integrated as well as the video, uh, and then, of course, audio. Now, Craig, with the with the integration of all these different elements, what what kind of resources are available to people out there to to help get them up to speed on these types of things? Well, I think the training environment is is one for sure that our menu, our, our manufacturing companies are uh, very keen on. Uh, we host uh, training seminars really almost on a weekly basis. Uh, we advertise a uh, you know a sanctioned training event about every quarter for the the various products that we that we manufacture, but we host people literally on a, about a weekly basis. So folks can come in here. Uh, we can do that in remote areas as well. And uh, again, it's just a matter of comfort and understanding uh, the feature set uh, and the programming and the playback 
I think that that's that's key on on getting into this 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 marketplace. You know. Yeah. Now, one of the um, the polls that we had talked a little bit about earlier was um, you and I had discussed um, what type of experience had with uh, people developing digital content. Maybe it might be a good time now to to get a sense of the audience and uh, and where they are with that type of thing. No, I think yeah. If, if you can put that up, it'd be yep. great. Um, we're very interested uh, for a couple of different reasons about content development, custom content development, because the digital technology allows users to upload their custom content for playback, uh, and in doing that, uh, requires either a media center or an individual uh, working within a company or a freelance to develop that content. Some of it is digital content that's developed on the computer. Some of it is uh, photographic content, uh, film and video that's incorporated into a, a film a movie, would, what I say, mm -hmm. uh, I should say. And so content development is key because all of these devices, whether it be our media servers or another manufacturer's media servers, uh, digital lighting, what have you, uh, they require specific uh, codecs and uh, playback uh, settings to operate properly. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't uh, been involved with that yet, I would uh, express that there's a very important need to understand that part of the business and start researching that on your own. Uh, we also, uh, again, down here in Austin when we do training, uh, we uh, certainly review that and explain uh, certain features to individuals so that they understand how to use certain software programs to allow for uh, you know proper playback yeah. settings. And also, you can visit our website to see that. Yeah, it looks like there's a great opportunity there because it looks like about 40% uh, of uh, our audience has had experience developing, and 60% uh, hasn't. So I think that uh, you know there there's definitely some some opportunity there for people to learn and maybe expand the markets that they're working on. I think there's a huge opportunity there just because of the specialization that's that's required. Um, yep, that being absolutely. said, we got uh, we got another um, another poll that kind of goes right along with that. Uh, if you have been involved in developing media content, um, what what types of products have you used? From something as uh, as simple as PowerPoint uh, to Apple Motion or Cinema 4D or 3D Studio um, or any other products that you might have worked with to develop uh, media content for your clients or for your in-house use. And we'll give them a couple of minutes there. Looks like PowerPoint is a, uh, a popular front runner. Now, do you have any? Are there any typical uh, development platforms that that you run across, Craig? Is there one product that seems to be used more than another? We see quite a bit the 3D Studio Max and Adobe After Effects are the okay. two uh, that we see that are probably most embraced by our users in the production okay. business. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that we had talked about in our initial uh, webinar when, when Richard Cadena was doing his presentation was some of the areas that people needed to be looked at, looking at in terms of where technology was going, how they could be improving their skills. Um, so I think that that you know, gives us a good indication of where, where the focus needs to be. Um, okay, and I'll go ahead and I'll close this poll and share the results with you. Uh, basically, 70% of you plus are, are familiar with PowerPoint, another 10% with Apple Motion, 10% with 3D Studio and 30%, 38% with with other software, uh, but definitely a great opportunity there again to learn uh, products that'll help you to expand uh, your markets and and take advantage of this converging technology. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Thank you guys for answering that. It's really great for us to see these uh, to see these answers come back from the field there. Thank you. Okay. All right, so now we're going into uh, media entertainment, uh, kind of a, an overview of, of what products are available for us there. Yeah, and again, we're just, just uh, you know, we're going to step through some of the products that we have, uh, not the whole line of product, but some of the products, and then, and then production shots, uh, uh, action shots that were taken on site uh, on certain, uh, uh, mostly stage shows. But um, let's, let's move forward on that, Kevin. Okay. You want to move right through these and just give people well, a quick Well, this sounds good. John, John yeah. do you want yeah. to take up? Thank you. Yes, we came out, uh, Barco developed a, our first single chip, well, first in a long time anyway, single chip uh, for mid-venue projector. When we came out with the CLM series, um, the projector is uh, available in the uh, SXJ Plus and HD formats. Um, you can see the specs there in front of you. 
this was something uh, the market we were targeting was uh, kind of a, an upgrade from the Sanyo or Aki type projector uh, to a little bit better picture quality using DLP technology, uh, a little bit uh, better return on your investment for uh, with regards to DLP versus LCD as far as re replacing parts and uh, consumable components and so forth. So we developed this product line uh, with that market in mind and uh, that's the whole purpose behind the CLM series. Okay. And from an application standpoint, John, what would you say would be the most typical applications for that? Well, as I was mentioning on the slide, it's hotels. Um, people, because it is a staging projector, people are using it uh, maybe as a backup to a larger projector or on smaller venues. Um, they're using this guy where they maybe used to use a uh, 10,000 lumen Sanyo, uh, putting this guy in for uh, in its place a little bit better picture quality uh, yeah, before, okay. they, before you take the next step up into a, a three chip. Again, this is a single chip DLP platform. Okay. And the, uh, the price point versus a, uh, a three chip is uh, quite substantial. Okay. Craig, if you could try, uh, John, if you could talk just a little bit louder. I, I, I think we're still having some problems hearing you on the other end. Just step up All to right. the phone. Um, so now we've got your, your CLM, your mid-venue projection. Uh, again, now we're looking at, say, larger hotels, uh, small to, uh, to mid-size applications. Yes, that's correct. This is the, just the HD version of the last projector. Um, the light output is a little bit less on this because of the, uh, the high-definition chip. You lose some light output on that. But, uh, and it's a true 1080p. 1920 by 1080 resolution. Uh, all the other features and lensing is the same as the CLM R10 Plus. Okay. All right. I think we have some application examples here. Either Craig or John, you want to just give us a little background on this particular application, what's being used here? Sure, I'll be glad to. Uh, this is an edge blended, what we would call a collage uh, or a soft edge blend uh, background. And then we have image magnification uh, frames with the lady there in the center. But also you see some of the features we have here with the collage on the background. Um, we used the DL2s on this particular show. And that's a drop shadow created by the DL2s. So we brought in a specific layer. And we'll get to that more uh, later on down the road with the, with the, with the product shots here. But um, it's a drop shadow that we brought in uh, behind that iMag work uh, on, the two, uh, on the two panels. Okay. Again, now we're talking larger venues, uh, broadcast, trade shows, product launches. Um, anything here you want to bring us up to speed on, John? Yep. So our, our FLM platform is uh, uh, our latest in uh, our projection line. Um, it is a liquid pool box, so the noise level on this is quite reduced from everything we've made prior. Uh, it's relatively small form factor compared to uh, its older predecessors, 20,000 lumens in high definition. Um, again, three chip, 1080p. The lamp. The one one thing that Barco's done through the years is we've carried over the same lensing from. This is our third product line that uses the same lens um, that we've used for probably the last almost eight years now. Okay. So that's been a huge uh, benefit for us. And uh, when we're talking about staging and people having to reinvest in new lensing for every product that comes out, uh, we've tried to make things more attractive by sticking with the same lens from product line to product line. Gotcha. Now, again, this is large venue. Uh, we've even done, uh, even had some outdoor applications with this thing uh, in an enclosure, of course, but shooting them on uh, various surfaces. One was a, a rock face in New Mexico. They lit it up with uh, video imagery using these projectors. So it's quite powerful. And, and with the filtering system, it's, uh, it's pretty well contained. So it can okay. handle most any environment. And I know one of the things I've, I was interested in, and I, I haven't gotten a full answer, but um, I know both Barco and High End were heavily involved with the, uh, the Olympics in Beijing. Um, do either of you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the projections that we saw there, how that was handled? I know there was a a huge amount of media servers involved, a lot of projection equipment. 
Uh, if you could just give us a little bit of background, I'm sure everybody would be interested in hearing more about that. Absolutely. We had uh, on Beijing uh, Stadium there, uh, there was a couple of years of research uh, prior to the event that, that, that occurred. And uh, we had 120 Exxon Media servers at that show. Uh, we also had uh, 80 orbital heads. Uh, that's our pan and tilt uh, head that fits onto a 20K projector. And then we had uh, 24 uh, 20K projectors, 20K digital projector, uh, digital cinema projectors, which is a 16 by 9 ratio. Uh, in doing uh, that 360 degree uh, event, and so you could understand, you know, with 120 media servers having to cycle to the same frame accuracy uh, to produce that was just a large undertaking. Uh, it took a lot of work on our end, a lot of testing, uh, just to test. Uh, the accuracy of the of the, the media servers themselves, but uh, again, 120. That's the largest media server installation ever, and uh, came off flawlessly. But we did actually uh, see one blue screen pop up for a few frames uh, during the event. So I say flawlessly to us in the production business. 120 media servers running one, two frames, blue screen wasn't so bad for us. Exactly. So now we're looking at a uh, another multimedia event. You've got a sports alliance show here, or Sure. This is an example of kind of an integrated event. You know, a uh, traditional integrative, uh, integrated event. Uh, it could happen in any ballroom, any day of the week. Um, but we have, you know, conventional automated lights, up lighting in the blues on the bottom, uh, upstage. And then we have these large flag panels coming down to a projection screen on the bottom of them. So we have uh, two, four, six projectors saying Sports Alliance. Um, we have one, two. Uh, front, oh, I can't tell, that. that's a rear projection uh, with the speaker, uh, the podium mic, and then we have all the automated lights there. Same event, different, different, little different yeah, view. Yeah, different looks. You can, maybe you want to toggle back between those two. Sure. I'll let them see the, the difference. Boom. There we go, man, a large, a large, uh, large display there with front surface projection. Going. Okay, we're talking events, LED products now. Keep moving through here. If you want to talk a little bit about? I know we had talked a little bit earlier about this, about the multiple facets that that help bring this show together. Yeah, absolutely. This is a lot of front surface LED work here, as well as digital lights. Uh, we have rear projection as well uh, on this on this stage here. And um, when we get through the photos a little further, you'll see how quickly you can change the look. Uh, this of uh, this particular setup, the same uh, setup, just totally different exactly. colors. Exactly, it's one. It could be one, you know, one Q press away. Uh, a total change. Okay, okay. outdoor LED displays, um, variety of uh, products. Exactly. Go ahead, John. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, you know, we started off our uh, our product line many years ago. You guys remember the the D7 product, which is uh, still in existence today, still out running, doing gigs. We've now progressed to uh, our new T-Series. First product out is the T20, which we had at LDI uh, last week. It is designed for larger screens, outdoor applications, um, and at a price point to compete with some of the, uh, um, well, let's just say the Asian products, for lack of a better term. But uh, very robust, very easy to assemble, and uh, great picture quality in our high-level processing. That um, the processing we're using on this this product has advanced quite substantially from the D7 and its predecessor. So it's if anybody was out at LDI last week, it was a display that was outside the convention center. Uh, as you're walking in the building, off on the right, you could see it out there. So uh, it was a pretty good look. Yeah, it was a beautiful display. All right. Okay, so we got some examples here. Victory Park in Dallas. Again, exterior. Yeah, exactly. Victory Park. This project was was a huge undertaking for us. This was eleven. There's total eleven uh, LED displays. You're seeing the four on either side, left and right. You see the main screen straight ahead. All Olight product. Olight 510. And then there's actually three screens. Um, 
thing, right? Or two screens, I guess, of uh, up on a tower off to uh, left as we're looking at it, um, like 110 feet up in the air. It was a huge, and the, the screens on left and right are actually on motorized tracks, so the thing moves around, and uh, it was a, quite an engineering achievement to, to pull all that off. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, the Olight, that's the Olight indoor-outdoor product. Okay. So, um, moving on to LED image processing. We want to go right to some application examples, or...? Well, just well, the, the the LED Pro or LED Pro on the previous slide. That any of you that's used the uh, an Image Pro through the years, and I think most people have come across one at one place or the other. The uh, the LED Pro is a derivative of the Image Pro. So all the intuitive um, menu structure by spinning the the knob and hitting select, everything that Folsom has done really well through the years. Uh, basically, they adapted into this product here, and it's one of the one of the first joint ventures we had. We being Barco, I'm a longtime Barco guy. So one of the first joint ventures that Folsom and Barco uh, came up with was this product. Very intuitive, very easy to use. Um, it's just a it's a simple processor for making just a a basic image on a screen. No no bells and whistles, no pips or anything like that. It's just uh, uh, like the LED, like the Image Pro, anything in, and then the output's just fixed at our uh, our DVI output for the LED wall. Okay. And again, you know, all walls depend upon the shape, the form, the configuration. Uh, you know, the setup is a little different, and those particular products maintain that for you. So anything into those products, from the director's truck to the front of house console to the cameras, whatever it may be, uh, playback devices, goes into those uh, particular type of uh, image processing devices and spits out the proper resolution, the proper setup, pixel count, and such uh, to the staging areas. Uh, so playback is is accurate. Okay. You want to yeah, talk a little bit about anybody that saw the U2 tour, this was huge. The uh, uh, the discon it's not a discontinued product, but the the center, the hippie beads there, was a product called My Sphere, or it's all 360 degree pixels hanging vertically. Uh, we've got projection, the Barco projectors. Uh, actually, these were and, and the outdoor screens were uh, were Olight for this uh, this application that we're looking at, and the whole thing was being run by an Encore uh, controller system to, uh, for all the imagery. Okay. Okay. As we're uh, stepping over, and we're going to start talking a little bit more now about some of the uh, you know how high end it's helping pull this whole converged technology. Um, I had another polling question for you. Uh, which of the converging technologies are you already working with? And our uh, selections are uh, digital lighting, projection, uh, standard LED, whether it be wash effects or moving heads, uh, LED video and, and other video, and traditional moving lights. So if you want to take a couple of minutes to, um, to step through that for us so we get, a, again, a better sense of uh, what you're already familiar with in the converged area. Uh, and as you know, uh, you know, with high-end, uh, full range of products from uh, Axon Media Servers and DL3s uh, through the recently introduced uh, Studio Picks and Show Picks, um, right on down through the, the Shogun and the, and the full range of consoles. Uh, so Craig will touch base on that in a second once we, uh, we get some input from you on that. And we'll just give you another minute. We're up to about 80% vote. If anybody else would like to cast their vote, we'll, uh, we'll keep the polls open for another minute here. Okay, and it looks like we've got uh, just about everybody's feedback in. We're up to about 86%, which uh, seems to be the magic number here. So we'll call, close that poll now. And uh, we'll share the results with you. And basically, 37% uh, of you are already working in the area of digital lighting, 70% in projection, 70% in LED, 23% uh, in LED video or other types of video, and 93% uh, in terms of uh, traditional moving lights. So, Craig, that kind of gives you a Beautiful. good sense of, uh, of where the rest of the audience is and uh, the types of uh, types of technologies that they're already working with. Exactly. It's okay. great to get that feedback. Um, you know, high-end systems products, uh, we, again, invested heavily with our resources moving towards the digital technology several years ago. Um, we do digital lighting now. Uh, the 
uh, Pixel products that we just launched recently. Of course, we were traditionally known as an automated lighting manufacturer. Uh, we acquired Flying Pig Systems several years ago. Uh, sort of in the same way that Barco acquired Folsom, uh, we knew we needed to have a control platform uh, on the front end that we would work with, um, intimately work with. And uh, we, uh, and so therefore we got in with Flying Pig and, and ultimately uh, purchased that company uh, from the shareholders. So, next one, slide please. Okay, the first thing we'll do is digital lighting. Um, let's talk about Axon and other media servers uh, in general. Um, this is an example of a media server on the market. Uh, it's a Windows-based uh, media server. Uh, Catalyst, uh, which is a very well-known media server, is a Mac-based uh, media server. Um, there's some advantages and disadvantages of both, some of it being with the uh, Windows-based media server. Uh, we have uh, uh, the usefulness of DirectX technology. Uh, which is some of the video playback parameters already built into the machines. Um, on the Mac side, uh, it's, they have very, very fast processors. Um, it's built specifically for media server applications, and the playback is nice and smooth for the most part. You can have multiple layers. Uh, that's another thing when you're dealing with media servers. Uh, some of the manufacturers will focus in on the number of layers available for playback. Um, we found, in general, that we only use two or three layers at most ever. Uh, one of them may be a framing layer. Another layer may be used for, uh, you know, the video playback. And then another layer uh, could be any type of movement effects that are uh, over the top of, uh, the, of the primary layer. So the Exxon is ours, an example of ours. Um, it's the same media server that's on board all di digital light, uh, DL2 and DL3. Uh, so the programming is uh, done in the same fashion. We wanted to keep that consistent as well in many applications where you'd have uh, some static projectors with an axon driving those static projectors on the integrated system. Some digital moving lights, uh, we wanted to be able to still do the edge blending features, the curved surface correction features, the spherical mapping, what have you, um, and have those all uh, program uh, and line the same. We can move towards the slide there. Yeah, Craig, um, for you. Yes? Okay, sorry about that. Got muted out on this. I had a couple of questions for you, and I thought we uh, it might be a good time to uh, uh, fix some of the things up. Uh, one of the questions is, what's considered a digital light? Is it more than just a DMX-controlled conventional with dimmer? an LED lamp or a video source? Uh, well, we consider digital light um, the light engine system and as well uh, uh, the media server uh, driving that. Uh, our original digital light was uh, a unit called DL1. We used an external catalyst media server uh, sent to the projector via five wire uh, traditional BNC type production cable um, or video cable. Uh, we wanted to get to the next evolution, which was the onboard aspect, so you could hang it like a moving light. You could plug in a DMX control cable from a DMX console, which we're all familiar with and are uh, more so used to programming on and playback. And so uh, the lamp technology is all kind of the same. Uh, you know, several of the lamps that go in uh, projectors uh, from various manufacturers these days are the same type of lamps that go into traditional analog moving lights. Uh, the things that we see with digital technology is the need to remain uh, very accurate in our repeatability where we were uh, uh, pretty specific with uh, analog moving lights. With digital lighting, because we're doing edge blending now, uh, we have to be very, very accurate. So our encoder systems on pan and tilt uh, have now become optical encoders as opposed to the traditional analog encoders that uh, I'm not sure how many people have looked inside of fixtures, but uh, it's just a much more accurate, uh, repeatable uh, system. So uh, everything, everything tightens up. Your playback, uh, uh, your content delivery, you get a lot more out of a fixture as opposed to 14 patterns that zoom and rotate. Uh, and we have also seen the reliability of the digital technologies and the digital platforms far superior to any of the analog lighting uh, 
because the heat management is much better. Uh, you don't have as many moving parts inside of the projector, uh, so the reliability has increased tenfold with our digital lighting uh, over conventional automated light, uh, uh, conventional analog automated lighting. Okay. All right. The other question we had was, are any of the older Axons left out of any features or content? I would assume that as you're moving forward, you're always building new features. And I know there was a lot of new content that went in with the, with the launch of some of the new products. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about you know, where, where, where the growth has come in the Axons? Well, with stock content you're, you're asking specifically, we, we introduced the, the Axon and the DL2 with around 1,400 clips of um, free uh, stock art content. It could be a, a JPEG file. Uh, it's a static image like a traditional Gobo would, uh, would be projected, or it could be a, a movie clip um, that could be used, and they're license-free. Uh, many of these companies that were traditionally doing Gobo uh, manufacturing now, like Blue Pony, are now moving into the uh, content development uh, business because they see there's a huge need for that and a huge future involved in it. So for Axon, um, you know, you just basically go to our website if you own a media server, really from any of them, uh, and download the updates or the software upgrades. Um, might have might have a small charge to it, but normally it's only for you know specific features. We we tend to do our our software uh, upgrades very free um, and will for some time now. Okay, all right, great. Um, Okay, with the DL3, and um, you know, I know that uh, the whole industry is moving more and more in that project, uh, that direction, in terms of uh, you know some of the things that I saw when you did your rollout down in New York City. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, just to talk about the digital lighting. I mean, um, first, uh, you know, it's 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 fun uh, to work with these digital lights. They don't get boring. There's so many, so many looks and so many things a visionary a production designer can achieve. Um, uh, the programming is kind of fun because, you know, as opposed to 38 channels of DMX control the library now, it exists, it's just 170 channels, so the number of fixtures you can put on a DMX universe may be three uh, as opposed to where we can put 33 or 40 fixtures of uh, traditional analog lights on top of the universe. Um, again, you know, the lumens level is something that we uh, were battling for the first couple of years of, of release of the product. But the manufacturers on the projector light engines, such as Sanyo or Barco, um, have done very well with improving their lumens levels uh, and as well the contrast ratio. So, um, you know, just the features and benefits. Again, you know, you have all the stock content. Uh, you have multiple layers of playback, one, two, three, four layers, uh, depending upon whose product you're using. Ours uh, has stayed with a three-layer uh, playback. And then as well, you know, I have your capability of framing, uh, warping, edge blending, um, spherical mapping, uh, you know, at the touch of a, of a quick cue button. Yeah. yeah. And I know with things like keystoning and that, that's, uh, you know, something we're hearing a lot about when uh, the, all the things that you've discussed when we're going out talking to um, resellers who are selling into the worship market, uh, to the corporate event market. Um, those are real key and critical items for them. Absolutely, it is. You know, where we, you know, in the past with analog lighting, you know, when we we pushed a fixture off to stage far stage left from a stage right position, you know, the 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 beam begins to elongate, and with digital media servers, you have the ability to do keystone correction and um, keystone ratio and readjust the alphanumeric text to fit properly and and uh, look look appropriate. All right. Now the the DML twelve hundred is the the Barco. Yeah, this is a newer this is a newer product. Uh, Barco has been developing this product for uh, quite a long time. Uh, it's re being released right now. Uh, uh, the first shipments are just arriving to the states um, of the first build. Um, there's been some prototypes out in the field being shown around. Uh, it's like our digital light. Uh, it'll have an onboard media server or not. That's a choice. Um, it'll also, uh, you know, as a companion to a to a DL3, it has a broader zoom range than a DL3. Um, it has a higher bright output. Uh, it has a higher resolution projector inside of it. Um, it's based on the CLM uh, Barco technology, uh, which is a 1400 by 1000 uh, ratio, or excuse me, resolution uh, projector, uh, whereas the DL3 is a 1024 by 768. So. 
um, that's that's a real advantage. And again, it's it's brighter. It's more used towards a long throw application, um, but also could be used in a near field because it has a broad zoom range. Uh, and again, it could be looked at more as a traditional 1200 watt moving light with video playback capability, whereas the DL3 and DL2 product really would be looked at as a digital light, more so as a projector item and not so much as a moving light. Okay. Basically, you have an example here you want to This about. is. And when I was talking about frame uh, uh, repeatable accuracy on pen and tilt and positions, you can see here um, this is an application of 20 digital lights. Um, as well, we have a large video display in the background there. Um, so this is an integrated system, lots of moving lights uh, to do key positions on the stage, but also all this projections needed where the cues occur with the stage uh, group with cue cards basically in their hands. The digital lights are projecting into specific places. They're maintaining specific keystone correction and framing to be able to do these particular pictures repeatedly over the course of the, over the, course of the industrial theater event. Um, and you can click through those and you can see where the different positions are happening. Okay. And this is a car launch. And you can see where they come together and do an edge blended collage. Back up, if you would, please. Yep. Here they're doing an edge blended collage. Uh, there you go, right there. Again, cue cards come together. Uh, the staff on the stage you know, holds those, those cards aligned and boom, you've got this image uh, that's moving into place there. That was a very cool event. You can see the background images as well. It was just a greatly, greatly done event. That was uh, designed by Light Switch. And here's an, here's, an, here's an installation. If you would back up one more sure. slide, I wanted to see both sides of it. This is an installation at, a, as a, at Evangel Cathedral in the D.C. area. Um, basically, they, they took 10 uh, digital lights, I projected those onto the screen upstage there. And when that was flipped, those fixtures uh, were tilted to the other extreme. The next slide, please. Yep. This is an edge blended image of those same projectors pointed towards the back of the church. So that's one of the benefits of the digital light. You, know, you can do things like that, which adds a very dramatic uh, look inside yeah. uh, of an installation. Now, was that basically a 360 degree effect? No, they just it was just programmed uh, on you know when they were doing the initial queuing for for the productions there. Okay. Uh, for the, so. And you can see one one second, Kev. Sorry. Yes. Um, you can see the curved surface correction there on the front edge, the front edge and lip that's curved, curved correction. And so you have edge blending technology, uh, you have the curved surface correction technology, obviously the content deployed. Uh, position accuracy all involved, um, ten, 10 digital lights and then install. Okay. Okay. Again, this is kind of a setup. It just shows um, when we're doing digital lighting or projectors for that matter, you count your horizontal plane first, which you're going to do a 2 by one edge blend, a 3 by one edge blend, 4 by one what have you, a 3 by 2 um, You set that up. You, you select your alignment grid, grid and programming. You select each fixture's location in that grid. Um, and at that point, any particular piece of content you select to be played back will now reside within that 3 by 2, 2 by 2, 1 by 3, whatever it may be, um, grid. Edge blended perfectly every time and repeatable. Uh, traditional corporate theater, uh, edge blended system. Same system, uh, different look. Okay. Okay. Uh, pixelation luminaires. This is something that we're doing now. Uh, we just released these products. This is a display product where um, you know traditionally LED displays uh, had a square uh, form, square with curves. Um, now we're into a rounded form. We wanted to keep it more like a lighting effect, but also provide the display uh, on board. And the next slide should or go two slides next. See what's next here. Yeah, this will show behind a, a small, uh, small rock band. This is some of the looks that you could get behind them. Beautiful automated luminaires. 
Uh, of course, most of us have all worked with automated luminaires. Uh, with Shogun, we implemented this LED tracking ring around it, which is really noticeable. I'm not sure if anyone's seen the Today Show, but uh, they have been using for the last year on their outdoor productions the Shoguns, and the camera really picks those LEDs up well. And you know, for daylight um, lighting conditions, where we would traditionally have automated lights kind of flashing past the lenses of the cameras. Now you have these LEDs which create these nice, nice scenic elements that the camera picks up on uh, without kind of a flashing light past the lens in a Shogun application. Integrated system, large format front uh, rear, rear projection surfaces, uh, moving truss LEDs. Now what we're doing with the LEDs is uh, with the tracking system and what we'll be bringing in into the near future, the eye up to the lighting rig, whereas traditionally we were looking, you know, straight ahead, beams coming down from the air, the background images from the LED uh, panels and such. Now we're trying to get the lights up, or the, the eyes up to uh, the lighting rig, sort of like trust toners have done over the last few years. And again, add contrast to the, uh, to the fixture uh, projections. Consoles, a big part of the whole deal is, you know, lighting consoles. Uh, again, we showed this picture earlier of the stage area with that large uh, front uh, projection. This is, uh, you know, this is the control area for that. Uh, this this picture was shot, I'm sure, you know, two or three years ago. But um, you see the Encore system there is in front of the lighting control console. And what we'll see in the near future is you know these these two practices coming together into one panel surface uh, where the digital light will be programmed playback by you know more so video uh, editing on board with local monitors preview monitors all on the same surface panel we want to move on to image processing or do you want to move through this we're we're running I a think little how far are we on? Uh, we're almost we're an hour in. If people are interested in staying, we're gonna we're gonna keep on going. Uh, just wanted to. Is there anything specific you want to touch on here in terms of uh, the Image Pro or that whole series, or you know how this is affecting converged technologies? Johnny, go ahead. Yeah, you know the Image Pro I was referring to earlier. Uh, I think most people are fairly familiar with this. This is a uh, the scaler, anything in, anything out, uh, show saver. So uh, it's just that simple. So I think most people are familiar with the scaler, so we can move on past that. Okay. We got switchers. Yeah, Screen Pro 2 is our uh, switcher. Yep. Uh, and of course, Encore is the uh, the more advanced system with all your pips and flying transitions and so forth. And okay. These now, what uh, what do you mean by the the term creative LED, Craig? That's that's one that uh, that I haven't heard a lot before. Well, uh, I think John would be better to to answer that question. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, after we uh, you know we started moving down the LED path, we came up with a team of engineers that uh, are dedicated towards creative uh, our CLI group, our creative light imaging team, and we started breaking apart, as it were, LED tiles to do. Uh, uh, to make various products, and that's when we started moving down this lighting path, using them for either lighting or video. Like this, the picture here we're looking at, uh, the bottle of Coke, is, uh, uh, I, don't know, I can't remember how many my strips, but it's a ton. They're all vertical in this application. They're side-by-side -side vertical. So uh, the bottle can be a, a red Coca-Cola bottle. It could be video wrapped all the way around the bottle. It could be anything you want it to be. And that's where we started getting creative by... Uh, getting away from just a, a four by three or sixteen by nine aspect ratio flat image, um, so it lets you be as creative as your budget will allow, basically. Okay, and also not having to deal purely with just flat surfaces, but also yeah. rounded surfaces and things of that nature. Yeah. Okay. We get the Versace Fashion Show. What, what's the use of the application here? Uh, it's LEDs. Uh, I can't remember which product that is, but it's LED on the uh, uh, on the. Um, the thrust there, the whole stage. Okay. This is one of our products. I can't remember which one. Okay. We've got a touring event with a large, uh, large-scale yeah. LED wall in the background. Yes. Yeah. U2 again. Is it? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Um, why don't we move to uh, to see if we've got any additional questions or feedback from our audience? Uh, what we'd like is if you have any questions about converging technology, if you have any of the the products uh, or categories that we've talked about, uh, Craig and John are available. So uh, if you want to go ahead and type your questions in, uh, I'd be glad to uh, to field those and see if we can get some answers for you. So does anybody have additional questions that they'd like to to bring up right now? Okay, um, we've got a couple of different things. Um, Ivan has has two questions right now. He would like to know um, how would the uh, the components to a, a basic video setup like media servers, video mapping, um, etc., um, come together? Uh, how do they all work together in a in a converged environment? Is there a is there any kind of a a simple answer that you can give to that, or is is that one that goes into too much detail? Uh, are you um, you're talking about the overall design? Yeah, he's saying what would the the components to a basic video setup be? So he's talking about the design. What what components would there be? Media servers, video mapping, scalers, live feed, etc. Well, normally what you would have is you would have the uh, the front of ha the front of house console, the lighting console. Um, you would have uh, any offline uh, trucks or switching surface panels, which would take in camera systems that are in the environment. Okay. Spit those out to wherever wherever. Um, within the house that the that the digital uh, screen brain, which would be like the 700 would be residing, uh, you take your system in to those products and that is going to, like John said, anything in uh, and, and anything out to the video display. So the 700, the Screen Pro, uh, all do that for you. Okay. All right. And of course, the digital lighting is tied into the traditional lighting console. Okay, um, I think we may have already answered this one, but um, basically, are the DL3 and the DL, DML1200 four by three aspect ratio, or are they switchable? They are four by three aspect ratio. Okay. All right. Great. Um, okay. We haven't really gotten into the need for sixteen by nine. Um, we can, in effect. Uh, um, uh, look that way with our masks. So basically, even though the raster resides as a four by three, we can take a video mask and lay it over the top of that and bring it into more so a, a sixteen by nine look. And the way we we would do it is instead of masking it though, we'd take two fixtures or even three fixtures and we would edge blend those together to create that sixteen by nine size with uh, with what we'd call the raster, which is the overall image capable projection area. Okay. All right, um, John wants to know um, what's the what's the product direction that you see things going in automated digital lighting? What's the what's the next evolution? Do you, do you have a sense mm. of that? Can't give that up. <laughs> <laughs> you can Man, tell them that you'd have to shoot them. Yeah, uh, you can tell them that you'd have to shoot them then, right? Okay. Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, Alex says we've seen the beginning of 3D LED media server software control with Radiohead. Are high end or end or um, Barco working on any products with this type of capability? Can't answer that. Okay. All right. What I can what I can say though, in terms of the future, guys, is this: with the edge blends that we're doing, um, if anyone's familiar or uh, have looked at the specifications of our DL twos and DL threes, um, and where we've moved with that with the onboard camera systems, um, again, I said we had uh, around 37 patents uh, existing. With that onboard camera system uh, patent that's for pan and tilt devices, um, we're able to do um, quadrants um, controls. So per se, interactive video will be a happening. Uh, is is just around the corner for us. We'll be able to uh, do a collage on a stage, per se, um, of a pond. And an actress uh, could come up, kneel down beside the pond, and slap the pond, and the water would ripple across the pond. That's more of this this interactive, um, active video is what we've called the patent. Okay. So you'll be able to see a lot more of that with these uh, interactive environment and virtual environments. Um, that'll be coming in the near future. Okay. Uh, looks like we've got one more. Uh, Travis would like to know: uh, Do you see video switchers integrating more DMX devices? Or do you see lighting consoles integrating more non-DMX devices or some combination of the two? 
Both. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say both. Both, both, both ends of the uh, uh, of the puzzle are kind of working towards each other. So, I, yeah, I would say both. Okay. All right. All right. Well, unless uh, anybody else has any other questions, uh, we'd like to uh, to thank you for uh, attending today's webinar. Uh, we'll be uh, following this up with uh, with others in the near future. So, uh, you know, we'll make sure everybody here is is kept aware of that. Check back to the uh, Creative Stage Light um, site frequently so that uh, you can see what our new events and calendars are. Um, and we'll also be following this up with a, uh, a brief questionnaire that we'd appreciate your feedback on so that we can get your ideas of what you'd like to see um, in future events. So again, Thank Craig you. and John, thanks very much for being with us today. Uh, thanks to everyone audience. for participating with us. Yeah, thank you very much. OK. Uh, thanks very much, everyone. And we uh, hope to see you uh, next time in the next of the uh, Creative Stage Lighting Webinar Series. Thanks, and have a great day.